The certificates all begin with three common courses, and that is EDU 631 through 633, and we'll talk a few minutes just about each of the courses. So the first one is transforming your curriculum for online learning. This is taking a course or, or a unit that you, it's really just a unit that you already have and, and moving it into an online environment in an intentional and thoughtful way with guidance. So I'm an old history teacher, so I would envision that I would take a, my unit on the Civil War and I would practice moving it into a learning management system. We've built the course so that students can use a learning management system that they already have access to in their district, or if they don't have one, that they can use a free Canvas account and build it there. And at the end, the, their final assessment is they go ahead and they give a video walkthrough of what they have built, kind of like Olga and I were able to do with the simulations. We were able to open them up and walk you through what was there. That's what students will do to show their mastery of um, online learning. All right, and Olga, if you wanna talk about 632. So building on that, this uh, has been a trend throughout all uh, the entire certificate. We want students to be able to build and practice skills and then showcase what they have created in to enhancing online student engagement. We do focus on various strategies uh, that the, as you're teaching online or designing courses for online that would be beneficial and maximize that student engagement piece. So if the, I'm sure your um, teachers are very familiar with um, a staring at a screen where everybody has their uh, video turned off. So how do you get students to participate? How do you get, get that buy-in? If learners don't show up online, there is no learning happening. There is no engagement, right? So what is it that we need to do to make it more interesting, more relevant, more authentic. How can we involve both the student and their community? It can be the parent, it can be um, the mentor. So what are some of those strategies, some of the hooks? How do we uh, design those uh, dis discussion boards in a way that students want to participate, that the, where their feedback is um, and, and input is valuable, where they do get responses and not just write something that goes into the ether and nobody reads that. So uh, one of the um, challenges of online education is the feeling of isolation that sometimes um, th that students experience. What is it that in this course, what is it that we can do to um, help students feel like they belong, like uh, they form a connection with a human, not just an avatar floating in um, around the course. And then um, moving on to 633, uh, there are different ways to assess uh, and do it correctly. What kind of feedback uh, we can provide as instructors, what kind of feedback is built into the learning management system that we can take advantage of. Uh, what are some uh, of the strategies, again, to make uh, the assessment and assignments meaningful to students and uh, so that they will not just uh, like, you know, in discussion boards, it's very common to say, I agree with you, right? That's probably one of the most frequent replies. What is it that we can do to move beyond that and really get that buy-in on the student um, part? And I guess the only other thing I would add, Olga, is that in 632 and 633, going back to my Civil War example, if I had built a unit in the first course, I would then continue to add to it. I would add um, some of those engaging pieces to, to make it more engaging in the, in the second course. And then in the assessment course, I would also practice adding different types of assessments to my, to my unit. That's correct. So you can approach one single course from different perspectives and work on different elements of the course this way. We also have the option of starting a new, right? If you have yes. something figured out and then you want to tackle a different topic, then you can definitely do that as well. Right. And now I'd like to just spend a few minutes talking about the fourth course that this is the one that, that determines which of the two certificates you earn. Um, in 634, this really tries to get to the heart of what school leaders are doing every day as they're managing these online ecosystems on the fly. They rarely have the, lux the luxury to step back and think about those big picture questions and issues and learn from how other districts have, have handled those same challenges. Um, this is that chance in this course to think about the policies, legal questions, user agreements, 
Um, and our the person, the SME, the subject matter experts that's that is writing this course is a technology integrator in in a main K twelve district who's worked in several districts, and she's bringing her her lens to this work. And then Olga, if you want to talk about sick and I and how I see this is in my in my former role, this is the course that I would have wanted to sign up and take would be 635. And I would see someone like Olga, who loves to dive in and do the advanced tools and, and really own that material, I would see her signing up for something like 635. So I'll let you talk about that one, Olga. And uh, EDU 635, Advanced Elements of Learning Experience Design, uh, is designed by uh, our, our own instructional designers. And uh, Elaine mentioned one of them. She um, also has a degree in game design. So we anticipate this course will be, uh, will have the elements of gamification, um, which increases engagement. It will have other elements that where we would show how this um, sausage is made, right? How those tools are applied and what the best tool is for a particular purpose. So I, I would imagine this will be very exciting. And again, um, our students will be able to build, practice and showcase their work throughout the course.